Hi everybody, this is Frog Snack, and I'm here with a cast system overview. This is a cast is a shoot off mod, or basically it's an add on to the Naraz story progression. So story progression controls everything that happens in the town and every sim individually instead of EA progression. And it's actually pretty easy to switch on and off. I don't know if I can show you here or if you have to do it. You might might have to do it from uh, either the computer, which my sims don't have in this save so much because I'm using the test of time save to show you, um, or from City Hall. So it looks like, so we have cast, so I can't turn cast off from here. I can add or remove, which is pretty cool. Um, and this is a sim I just clicked on that's not in our active house. So if you can see the sim I just clicked on, I don't know disgrace by age. I didn't set that up. That's part of the default. So the cast system basically is labels for uh, groups that the sim belongs into, which what they came out with in Sims 4 kind of reminds me a little bit of the cast system mod that had already been made by Naraz. Now, I haven't played Sims 4, but I bring it up because when they came up with uh, the one with clubs, I forget what you, you called it. It was like after Get to Work, they came out with something that um, was like clubs people could join and they loved coffee or they did this or whatever. Um, this cast system is pretty similar to that in terms of it doesn't tell the um, Sims how to behave, but it finds their behaviors and then uh, chooses what they're like or, or you can automatically have them be assigned. So you could look them up later according to cast or check demographics and things like that. So um, the dude I clicked on here, let me get out of here, is uh, Stavros Kovet. Kovet, I guess I did change his last name. Beautiful. Uh, he was from a couple of episodes ago, so he just walked past an Edifica house. Yeah, so this is actually, I'm playing Demetrius, and a cove walked by, and I thought, well, that's a good example. This is how this, um, the challenge I'm playing works anyway. So an emperor walks by, and you actually have to go through the house and uh, see if there's anything over a thousand simoleons, and if there is in a slave house, then the slave has to go to the gladiatorial games. Now, uh, kind of ironic, I'm not playing this family, so I'm not going to invoke that rule, even though it's not true. I did go through the house, so I was just curious. Um, but Demetrius is misbehaving, so he's all the way over here when he doesn't have to be, uh, but he visited his family, so that's kind of cute. But I just figured I would show you the difference in cast while I'm here because I was just kind of checking out the town again, and what cast does is it helps story progression filter things through the town, right? So here, if I look up Stavros in cast and go to story progression... Um, I have do, 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 uh, his labels. So he's an emperor, he's a male, he's non-active family, and he's teenagers. Why are these important? Non-active family, for example, uh, this is how it's set up. You can click through all of the different options, but allow aging is set to false. That's something I did globally from, um, from City Hall. So this is how you do TS2 style aging. Now, I'm not going to click on each sim individually and go into, you know, add new cast or go into non-active family and uh, click on them and tell them that they're not aging right now. They're not aging because they're not the main household that I'm playing, right? So that's one of the ways that you can control that. So there's different ways to get to these menus, which is helpful. It seems like there's a lot of options, and there are, but when you can, can click on it from a sim, when you can click on it from City Hall or from a computer, you actually have a good amount of options as to how you play the game. So let's check Demetrius's cast over here. Uh, he's got way more options, of course, because I'm playing him. So story progression cast. So again, this is an add-on to the normal story progression mod. So he's part of the active family, active rentable. That one I don't know. I haven't um, played with it too much, but you can apparently rent out lots. Um, he's an adult. So again, you can categorize what adults or teens or children can and can't do. Disgraced by age, again, I'll have to look it up. Uh, males and slaves. So the slaves, emperors, plebeians, patricians are casts that I had to set up. Uh, right, so I can't, I'm not going to add a new cast from here, but what I am going to do is give you a couple examples. Now, um, this video is taking a little bit longer to come out than I wanted it to, and I had some issues where a couple months ago and I started and I created a video explaining all the cast uh, kind of rules, dynamics, and I tend to not remember things after I've already done them, so I totally forget what I put in that video, but the audio was corrupted, so I had a video version only, which doesn't help us. All right, so here we are at City Hall, going into Naraz Mods, going into Story Progression, 
And again, you have cast, you have general options. So the general uh, might control things like speed, like how quickly it's working, or you can individually, here's cast options, here's how quickly, that's how many game minutes I have it set to run, 1500. Um, I don't have stories on right now, I don't think. Do, 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 that's a different thing. All right, so here's options, cast, let's get out of options. And back into cast options. So notice under general, I had I could have access to cast just for how quickly it, it works. So here's all the individual casts in my game. Now most of them are already preset, although you could remove them. I certainly don't care if I have a cast for horses, but if I wanted to change horse behavior or not let horses in town have babies or let them all have a lot of babies, I could do it from here. Uh, you also can control some things that are uh, immigration into the town. That's a different mod um, called uh, Register. So, um, all right, so he's not a sim bot. So singles, I can choose how singles behave. But what I set up again, so we've got elders or we've got emperors. So emperors, um, and I have a copy paste of this somewhere if anybody wants the actual data of how I have my test of time challenge set up. I know there's a couple people that are switching from doing it with Sims 2 to Sims 3, and this is a conversion of the original challenge that I have here, and this mod is key to helping me convert. Um, all right, so this is a default setting, is the max minimum net worth. I don't know what the math is here or why it matters. Um, could be all nines for all I care, basically. It's not excluding anybody is how that's, I am assuming how that is set. So it's not automatic to be set an emperor. So, um, which is weird because I kind of thought it was. Uh, hmm. So I'll have to look that one up, which I believe happens when they're born. So, but they are assigned when they're born. So that might be under, under a different thing. All right. So uh, gender, male, female, it, it can apply to everyone, right? So it's not like Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, Girls Only, Boys Only. Ha! Hilarious, uh, timely joke. All right, so it is inherited, so there you go. So it's not automatic, which means, let's say, if I had um, set up so that once they reached level 5 in um, athletic, which I, I don't know if this gets that detailed, but, you know, if there was something like that, then they automatically, the cast was applied to them. That's what that means. But inherited means they can be born with it. Cast priority, it does not priority one, it's not the most important, but um, cause I, I think things like whether or not they're active, you know, sim takes uh, it takes precedent over that. Uh, they're not allowed to go get a degree, so they're not going to automatically go to university and when I come back to the family end up having a degree, right? That shouldn't apply to any of them, so all of my casts are set up like this. Um, the emperors have a higher chance of adultery or having affairs, so basically they had more of a lavish lifestyle in Rome, so I set them up that they might cheat a little bit more, and their cheats, um, you know, could be discovered, it might not, whatever. Uh, so, right, allow inventory management, purchase deeds, so these are things they're allowed to do, they're allowed to buy things when I'm not playing them, they're allowed to earn money, um, they're allowed to give each other child support, it's another cool thing that you don't get with a normal uh, gameplay, but you get it with uh, Noraz's story progression. Base number of children, they're allowed to have up to three without me playing them. Now, they don't really have a lot of kids when I'm not playing them, uh, probably because I have everything set to the non-active family not aging right now. But if everybody was aging, they would definitely be having kids while I wasn't playing them. They get two days of maternity leave. I can change that to zero. I have it set to the father's name for... Um, do 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 marriage purposes, which it, it should have been the mother's, and then when they get remarried, it goes to the father's name just because we're being kind of traditional with the challenge. So I'm not sure what happened that I changed that there. Um, pregnancy, unexpected base chance, so you know the chance that they could be pregnant. Um, again, this is all story progression, so this is not user directed, it's not things that I've created or told it to do. Uh, hello, breakup. Uh, I did have that set to true, but they were all going back and forth and breaking up with each other all the time. So this is uh, for general romance. Basically, they can get married and I think then they can get divorced. Like they have to go a little bit further because I turned off the cooling time. Uh, there is a dowry. So the dowry actually is part of the challenge. And this is a way for me not to have to manually go move funds around. But um, arranged marriage, if there's one set, which this does happen. And it's actually pretty cool when story, story progression is like, well, apparently we're getting married. You know, it's kind of sarcastic. Uh, but it's kind of cool that they can they have something like that, an option like that. And again, you can turn it off. But so arranged marriage cast, which means there's this means two. So if I click in here, uh, mm, oh, relative priority. 
And, okay, I'll have to look that one up again. Sorry, I'm not doing that. Oh, okay, this is where it is. All right, so I guess priority before this menu. So this menu says that they can arrange a marriage. They can end up with emperors. They can end up with patricians. They can't marry down to plebes or to slaves. So that's how any of these work. So like plebeians are the ones they have actually the most mobility freedom. They could move, marry slaves. They could marry patricians. Slaves can only marry other slaves or plebeians, but the plebes get like three groups, which is kind of cool. So I'm not changing that. There you go. Um, go back into it. So oh, just a quick overview of my settings and what they're useful for. So romance, legacy, marriage, name, right, set to husband, so whatever reason, I don't know that I had it to father, so I could do mother and husband again, but again, I think I was getting a little confused because they ended up cheating on each other so much, and I just wanted to put it all on one side. Uh, disallow trait or forced trait, so let's go into that. This is another cool thing that you can apply. I'm not going to mess with these things that are, you know, set by the game, these placeholders. But um, I love that there's two adventurous. One of these is for pets, and I don't recall which one. So you can make all of the emperors absent-minded, for example. You can have them automatically be absent-minded. You can't have them all be aggressive because they're not pets. So you do have to know which moodlets matter for who, but most of these are for sims. They're not all for pets. It doesn't, you know, you don't need them to be agile. But again, if you wanted emperors to have better pets than everybody else, you could experiment with this and set it to agile and then give them a bunch of horses and see if regular sims, you know, just have nothing and their horses get the agile. That might be how that works anyway. Uh, right. So, complimentary entertainment, computer whiz, couch potato. So this, you notice this is something you can buy with a lifetime wish. Computer whiz, you can't. But you can still set it so that every emperor has this. Now, I don't think you can go more than the slots they have, so I'd be curious to see how that works. But it's pretty easy to get, um, like, complimentary entertainment for every emperor, so that's what we have set here. So again, they have a little bit of special treatment, which is what I wanted to be reflected in the town when I'm not playing them. Uh, where's another one? No bills ever, so they don't have to pay for their things because everybody else gives them money. That's kind of the story with them. That's why the emperors are in power, because they want everyone's money. <laughs> All right, uh, it said five, but I didn't uh, carefully go through all of it. Where's this other one? Down here somewhere? Oh, it was up here. Always on the list, so they get invited to all of the whatever. I think that's actually just for clubs, and I don't even have clubs. Born Salesman is kind of ironic. I didn't notice, but I guess basically giving them discounts, making them more savvy uh, with money, and can salute. I didn't realize with set, that's kind of ironic. A lot of them actually end up in the military, so they're probably going to get can salute anyway. So those are forced traits that um, emperors have. I think above reproach was on that list too. And then disallow traits. So these are things that they're not allowed to have. Uh, pretty much traits that might embarrass them. So they can't be, oh, they can't be clumsy. That's hilarious. And I might change some of these bot fan just because I don't want Sims to walk around in cardboard boxes. Um, but something like clumsy might not matter too much. Um, I actually, I'm not sure why I had that. Dis computer was, I don't want to see anybody longing to be part of technology. Efficient inventor. So again, this kind of controls the timeline of the story I'm trying to tell. The fact that everybody lives in the Roman era and they don't have computers and bots and everything else. They could be a genius. They could, um, they can't watch the stars. No telescopes have been invented yet, but they can play chess. They could be gatherers, right? So a lot of this is totally fine for them. Jet setter, they're not going to be flying all over the place because I will, um, which actually doesn't matter. I think that's another user directed, for example, when you go on vacation. But I really don't let them go on vacation because I don't want to corrupt my town. Seems like a simple reason. Okay, and unlucky. They're not unlucky. They're the emperors. Now, what I might do, I'm in Gen 5, technically. So I, I think the Gen 5 child was just born. After Generation 6, we go to the next era. So what I might do for Gen 6 is go change some of these, make them unstable. Or I could adjust it so that the emperors start losing their cool a little bit and start losing favor, um, or just start behaving a little bit more erratically, th that might be fun. So that's, it's complete control over your whole town, and that's just the emperors. So uh, let's go to patricians. They're not going to be too much different here. I think they're allowed, oh, they're allowed to rent homes. Do, 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 child support base chance, more likely. And what was it? So the, so adultery and liaison. So this was 35 and 30 for the emperors. So, um, I have it so the Bupkis family, basically, that's who is patricians. I have it so that they cheat a little bit less, right? They value family a little bit more. So that's the kind of detail you can get into your town, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, ten, only 10% 10 chance of having an uh, extra baby. I don't know why. 
Don't know why. Arranged marriage cast, they can go up, middle, and down. So they can um, also marry plebeians. They can also marry patricians, and they can marry um, emperors. They have six disallowed traits. They have no forced, so they, they could be crazy. <laughs> because they're in the middle. All right, so if that gives you a general overview of all of that, and adding a new cast is as simple as going in here and typing a label and saying, you know, um, new cast. Or I could make it... Um, nerds, right? And I can make it nerds and I can go in and set it so that they always have um, computer whiz, etc. Right? But I'm not going to do that right now. But that's basically what happens. They end, Then they end up on this list. You go ahead and adjust them through the list. So like all of these other ones, mummies, non-active family, um, plumbot service, uh, singles, teenagers, vampires, these were all already preset. So I literally only added the five that are required for the town, and this is how much detail. I mean, you can go into ghosts, you can allow them to get married, you can disallow them, you can change everything about them. I haven't messed with it, so a lot of these are just the default settings. They can harvest food. All right, doesn't, uh, doesn't seem to matter too much, but that's the option. Um, there's also, so non-active family, this is what I wanted to show you, this is the other option. So again, we're in the story progression and then the cast menus and then we're in non-active family. Um, we're filtering it, so one sim type, it's only non-active family, so see how you have to actually change it so that the la label matches. So, uh, like for a ghost, they'll probably have to be dead, <laughs> right? Doesn't matter if they're a dog or employed, but they have to be dead. All right, and then that's something that it has to match. You can set it to match all filters, or you can set it basically like if this is set to false, which it is now, let's say there was multiple types, they would only need one type to be a part of the non-active family cast. So if I had it set to imaginary friend, non-active, I, I could actually do all of the, I could do, um, what do you call it? I could label a cult as the cast filter, and then I could control how all of the, uh, ghosts and fairies and uh, werewolves and whatever in the whole in the whole game behaved in imaginary friends so like I could select this but the way that it's set up right now is that you only need one to match excuse me <clears throat> that you only need one of these in order to make them automatically part of that cast or when they're born right um do 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 apply to household. You can also click on actual houses and apply an entire cast to that house, which is something I have to do from time to time, allow aging false non-active family. So that's how we have TS2 style aging. It's actually pretty simple. You just switch that from true to false. Uh, death push chance. This is the chance that they have to die. I mean, all of these have great explanations. If you go online to Nerez Wikispaces, I believe they're moving their site soon because Wikispaces is closing. So I'll put the link to Naraz, but I know that they're going to be moving their site soon. Um, so allow romance. Again, you're controlling their behavior when you're not playing that with them. I don't mess with the static motives. I let them have all of those not drop. Um, but if you wanted everybody passing out around town because there's a heat wave or something, you could experiment with even that. Um, especially if it's non-active family, that's everybody who you're not playing. So um, aside from that, town options, all of it's pretty similar but you're changing who it applies to. So this is the whole town. If you want to have, you know, to have one lot, have different rules than the whole town, you can control it here. And I'm, I'm on lot options. So the lot that I clicked on, which in this case is City Hall, that would be the lot option that I would be affecting. But if I wanted to come over here to this, oh, it was supposed to be a bakery I'm going to set up or the community orchard or something. And I wanted on the community orchard for uh, everybody there to be able to, get buzzed or something like that, then I could play around with the options. You know, maybe they go there and they, they get drunk because there's a nectary. Um, or maybe they come over here, maybe they all love to swim just so that when I go to the public baths, everybody all of a sudden is in the pool and swimming and it's full. I mean, you could do little things like that, I would assume. I haven't gotten into that level of detail, but that's what I like about it is that you can. Also, there was one more thing that I had looked into, story progression. Um, let's see if it's, I don't know if it's under cast options because, or not. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's, okay, that's just going to select on the, select them. I'll have to find it again because there is a way. Mm, it might be under general. Do, 
debugging reset. Uh, export and import, by the way, if you like your settings, you can export them. And then if you have to start a new game, you can import them and you don't have to go change hundreds of options hidden in menus, which I have done and it's really helpful. Um, so that's export settings and import right here. I don't mess with tuning mods, so I've never had to use that one. Um, all right, this is under main. Stories. Um, these are additional uh, added things to the story progression mod, which I don't have required in here. Mm, it's not debugging is really only if you're kind of trying to report an error, you can turn that on and then you can send a report. So you would export and you send the report to NRAS. Um, so I'm pretty sure that how that's how that goes that you export because you can, I think, save it in a menu. Um, Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah, there was a way to select a whole cast, and that's what I'm trying to do. So maybe it's under town options. Cast allows, so we're allowing the town to have casts. But, um, and if I, if I select this, I mean, it'll just flip it to false, which I don't want to do. But what I'm trying to find out is demographics, because I did, it was hidden in a menu, and I might have to just find it. I might have to pause this and come back in a second, which I'm going to do. All right, so uh, if you go under NARAS, this is where it's at. It's master controller. So again, you have some menus from uh, the actual, from different lots, you know, so I might, I would have NARAS master controller story progression from certain lots anyway. But if you want the whole control of all of the mod suites, everything that you've downloaded, you go to City Hall or you go, I believe it's the same from a computer. I know City Hall is absolutely everything. But what we're looking for for demographics is under Master Controller. So this was supposed to just be cast. Um, quick overview, but I think I'm going to go into Master Controller and show you demographics just because I think it's really important for you to know who is in your town and what they're doing. And demographics can get you that. You can narrow this down to one family and find out what they're, you know, what's happening in that house without having to switch around and trying to play them, without having to go into edit town or load things. Um, it's so much easier to just look things up here when you can and when you know that they're there. So, for example, I'm in the Roman era playing this challenge. So I often need to find out who's single, for example. So I might go into relationships and then go into cast. And I think that's the way you would do it. Hang on a second. Number of children. I might want to make sure that people don't have any kids, for example, or, you know, it might be, I might be trying to start an orphanage and I want a family with eight kids. You know, I could do it that way. So let's just go in and see. Progression cast. Okay, so I'm going to select that. Then it's going to divide out my sims. So these are the count of how many sims. So there's eight in my current family. Active rentable, again, I'll look that one up. I don't know if they're renting a lot technically. I'd have to go double check because I just kind of clicked on this family. I have 76 adults in my town. Disgraced by age. I don't quite understand that. Um, I'm going to have to look it up online. And I feel like I haven't run into it this much before, but I have this time. So elder females. So I have nine elder females, but 17 elders. So do the math, right? That means I have eight elder males, which, by the way, here's males. I don't have a separate category for elder males, so that's kind of weird. Uh, this also doesn't have like total sims in your town. This is a breakdown for the menus that I selected. So we have 148 females and we have 159 males. So we have about half and half. I think they have a 50% chance when they have a baby that it's one or the other. And I try not to control it with uh, watermelon or whatever you can eat in the game. I'm trying to let this one be a little more quote unquote organic. Um, Patricians. So, okay, so then this is where you get into actual. So these are all casts that are set up by the game and then some by me. Non-active family, so 299. So how many sims are in my, <clears throat> excuse me, town? 8 plus 299. <laughs> so that's a lot. Uh, I, I'll have to check. I think the town is set up for only 300, but I'll have to make sure because I'm, I'm obviously over that limit. So it might just not be adding other sims when my town gets to that number and it has to do with importing new sims anyway. So it might not affect me the way I play. All right, so, um, so emperors. So there's 44 emperors, so 44 of 300. So there it's like, what is that, a sixth of everybody? 
Uh, so then next on the list is patricians. There's 37, there's 48 plebeians, and there's 72 slaves. So this is because there's two families that are the slave families. I wanted it to be kind of, um, I don't know how realistic that is, but in Rome they ran over uh, every other nation that they could and took over and, you know, it brought people in as slaves and all of that. And then everybody else was like special that already lived in Rome or parts of it as they expanded. So, um, all right, so 74 young adults, for example. Uh, let me just go into that. So here's all of my young adults. I can ignore certain last names that don't matter. And uh, relationships. Mm, is that the highest relationship Hermes has with anyone? Okay, so here's relationship demographics for literally one sim. He's not pregnant. His partner's not pregnant. <laughs> he has a friend. He has three average friends. Well, it's only one dude we selected, right? He dislikes somebody, uh, has a flirt, no enemies, and he's married, right? Uh, I don't know if this is male and then female for the comma, which it really might be. I'm not sure. All right, so um, anyway, so there's that. That's, it gets really specific. So a more practical use might be um, Sims by money, who's got the most money, right? So you click on that. And this is just something you want to get lost in these menus and learn them because you learn so much more about your town. But so Sims by money and then here's net worth. So here is the value of all of the individual households in my town. So you're looking at the whole town again because we clicked on, um, the, you know, the town hall lot or whatever. So there's 29 Sims where in their household they have $56,000 or less. Uh, this one's interesting, too. I did click on this in between the quick break there, and I checked on it. So the 51007, I figured this would be the uh, Emperor's family. And it it's the Emperor's, but it's not the Emperor's main family. This is Kemri. He's actually my little favorite dude that has... Um, he's got a big mansion on the hill, and he owns the clothing store. So I, I did put a clothing store in. It's part of the challenge. Oh, excuse me. I'm kind of yawny today. Mm. Excuse me. All right, so it's part of the challenge. So that's him. Uh, but if I go back to Sims by money, and then I go back, uh, where was it? Net worth? Because you could do family funds, how much liquid capital they have. And then go spend it. <laughs> um, so if we go down here, there's 21 at most. So this is a bracket, basically. So these seven sims have between 503 and 622. I don't know why it's such an arbitrary number. It might just average however many sims are there. So upwards of 503, there's 21 sims, which is more than one household. So we have the founding Bupkis family, and we have the emperor, so we have the Coves. So that's the actual emperor's family. So I think it's funny that one of his like cousins technically has more money than him. Um, so probably the way he runs a business instead of just sitting on his butt all day. Um, again, so these, these are your de demographic options. So you have career summary, how high they are in their job. I'm not sure perf, you have jobs by career. Uh, Kinsey scale is, uh, I think sexual orientation, which is crazy. Even, even that you can look at, uh, lots. I don't know if this is how many lots they own. Population is what I tend to go into. Relationships we just looked at that got very detailed. So if there's a specific sim you want to keep an eye on or I'm sure you could do that looking at a whole lot. There's probably a different way of doing it. Sims by debt, what they owe, uh, or sims by money. So that, that's what we just looked at. Um, but if I'm going to go to population and go back to cast, progression cast. So there's all of that. And then um, patricians, for example, here's all my individual patricians and how many days old they are which you can also click on the top of these and filter. So here's my oldest patrician is uh, Shana Bupkis. She's remarried. She's the one that remarries everybody. Uh, followed by Parody Bupkis. So they have a gap of 20, 20 days, which is kind of a lot. So again, you get pretty detailed with this. So um, I think I do want to check relationships and go back to cast again. So let's find out um, adults. Is there for singles? Okay, so here's a singles. It doesn't have them separated by cast. Okay, so I went through cast and then went through single. Uh, so weird. Like, okay, so she's a Salson. And that's her individual relationships again. I know there's a way to find out. Mm. Hmm. I'll have to keep an eye on it and look. 
All right, well, oh, that's weird. Oh, I love this one. Okay, so let's do that again. What was it, relationships? No, wrong one. School. There's a school here? There shouldn't be. <laughs> okay, yeah, get out of here. We don't need to see no school. Nobody cares about that. All right, go back. It's weird how it zoomed in, too. All right, uh, where are we at? Master controller. Demographics. Keep, uh, if you noticed, it clicked by really quickly, too, but you can export demographics. So you can have a conversation with somebody who's trying the same challenge or who had the same issue, and you can say, well, here's my demographics. Um, or here's what my town is doing, part of a blog. Could be kind of cool to share that. All right, um, relationships... Where was I? Um, <laughs> town family. This one was cool. I clicked on that one almost by accident. And uh, I, I didn't know we had an alien household here, but we do. So these are the different last names. So this is why I recommend doing this if you're going to have a challenge like this. Um, where you need to know what happened to all your branch families. And you have five main families in this challenge. So here's all of my bup kisses. So one, two, three, four, five, six different, uh, or seven different family names. So they might not all be in the same house. I'll click on one of these in a second. Here's all my coves. Here's some slaves. Here's some other slaves. Uh, Gladiator. Oh, okay. So that is the name of the house because there's only one house name there. And Serena Edifice was recently added to that. That's actually the mother of... That one's kind of a crazy story. I'll, I'll have to get into it next time we get into the challenge videos. Um, but yeah, that's an important person that ended up in the gladiatorial house. Um, McEdifice is a branch family of the edifice. Here is the Salsons, right? So there's my, my five main. So you can tell there's really not a lot of strangers in the town. I have it pretty well set up. Uh, here's Kale Cove. All right, so town family, and then it doesn't tell their relationship to each other. Maybe? I'm not sure, because I clicked on town, so it's not like I clicked on individual sims. Uh, okay, so... Who was that? Hang on a second. <laughs> I think that was Kale Cove. That was our emperor dude. Let's go town family. Let's go Cove. Yeah, that was Kale. Alright, so this is the emperor. Now, he married Lindsay and therefore became an emperor. It's, it's totally cheaty of me. Uh, he has no enemies? Or... Okay. I, I don't know. I don't understand the distinction here. Average dislikes. He has got to have more friends than that. Or it's only looking at him, but really, I, I thought he had more than two friends, so that would be kind of pathetic. All right, so anyway, if that gives you an idea of all the things you can look up. Um, population. Let's see if there's just a general relation, other than the way that we're looking at it up uh, right now. I don't know why you would want this to be random. Let's do, 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 do. Oh, check that out. Ancestor, blood or stepchildren, descendants. He has 288 sims that he's not related to. Is it? Okay, wait, none. Is that all Cove again? Weird. Okay, um, let's do that again. Relationships and relation. So this is just an overview. So blood relationships. This is one family. And and whether or not they like each other, I guess. Good friend. See, this is what throws me off. Is, is this that Aurora has a good friend? Who is she a good friend to? If that makes sense. Because if you select on a sim and they're married and you get one of these menus, it'll have the little marriage icon and it'll say they're married. Parson Edifique. Just his general. That's a little crazy. All right, I'm going to have to play with this later on, and we'll see if we can get something better out of it. But for now, that's a pretty good overview of the cast system and how you can check your town demographics. Um, I'm going to try one more time maybe on demographics, because there was a menu I wanted to see that I didn't get to see. Um, which may be population. It wouldn't be age. Oh, I think I know what it is. Progression cast. And then if I click this, maybe. No. I need a menu that gives me numbers. Free in two hours. I love that option. Since we're having a party, get your butt over here. <laughs> kind of cool that you can choose that. Um, let's see. Moodlet, who was in a good mood of my whole town. Kind of crazy. Friendships. Can I be looking for... 
type of role, no. Personality leader, this is another a way that story progression runs your town. So if they're like a member of town bully or something, then you can actually select them here. Uh, net worth, debt, cast. See, that's what I just clicked on and that wasn't helpful. Cult type. Number of friendships, enemies, not active. Hmm. Male, female, DNA percentage, age, maybe? Okay, so that's another helpful one. So this is relationships, but then age. So it really was just looking at age. So I have 76 adults, 40 babies. That's going to be insane in a couple of uh, rounds, am I right? Children. So I had an aging general pop population when I was trying to age the whole town at once. So probably a gap here with teens. Lots of young adults and adults, so they're having all of their kids right now. That's actually half the population, about, what is that, 150, 160, are of breeding age. So they're having all the babies, which is insane. Um, yeah, and here's all the adults in the whole town. But I don't know if... Population... Mm, yeah, alright, well, I'm done looking at this. Oh, hi there. Is that what I was looking for? Yeah, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> I just, I love it. I didn't go into a more detailed menu. I just hit the X. Uh, so there you go, childless. Child to parents ratio, four. Uh, everyone has an average of four children. Adult to child, a lot more children than parents right now. Um, male, female, one is currently pregnant. Um, 22 babies so that are male and 18 female babies. That's a lot. Babies only are two days in this. Uh, but you, I just played a bunch of families and then they're not aging. So that's a part of it. And that's why I might want to have at least the whole town's going to age together pretty soon here. But this is a good way to find a match. So I have seven male teens and six male uh, or six female teens. So those are ones that I might have to keep an eye on this and see if they need to be paired up. Or I can go and choose a menu according to teenagers and then go see what their relationships are like or go select, make them active and bop around to the families and try to make a good match for them by the time they become young adults. Or you could go into young adults and see if they um, need to have a match. Now, if you don't mind having an aging population of uh, old spinsters or whatever that aren't getting married, that's fine too. I mean, obviously I get into a lot more trouble because I have way too many sims in my town. Um, so that's a good overview. That's everything done from City Hall. And uh, this is the test of time challenge is what I had set this up for. But that's a good way that you can add casts. It's pretty easy. And if I didn't show you this part, uh, one more thing. If I didn't show you how to add the cast, which I thought I had, but again, I've had a couple versions of this video um, that didn't go through. So story progression, cast options, add new cast. Again, new cast. Um, and then it just appears. Here's new cast. That's their name. I can change it. They have a curfew. You can give them a curfew. You can so play around with this. Make a cast of just goth kids or something and just see what happens. Right? Just play with it. It's super easy to remove also. Uh, hello. I don't even know Disgrace by Age. I really have to look that one up. I'm going to remove that one. Alright, so new cast is gone already. Uh, Disgrace by Age... Teen, youth, adult, and elder. Or teen, young, adult. Okay, so this eliminates... It doesn't look at children, toddlers, or babies. I don't think I created the cast. I might have. Allow celebrity, celebrity disgrace. That's hilarious. That's literally a whole cast designed to let people be disgraced as a celebrity. <laughs> so, if that gives you an idea of the detail. All right, well, thank you for the... Um, Watching the overview, if you have questions, I'm sure you have some. The easiest way to answer most of them, honestly, is to dive into these menus. I don't do it a lot myself, but when you're trying to set up a new town and know exactly what's running, I totally recommend the story progression mod, but not only just that, the cast mod, even if you're playing in the modern era, so that you can know how many people have an alien in their household, right? What if you wanted an alien in every household and you need to find a way to look all that up? That's a good, good way to do it, so... All right, again, this is Frog Snack. I hope you all are having a great day. I'll talk to you later.